scripture reading is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. Verse 18 says, and I'm using, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. 18 says, don't remember the former things and don't consider the things of old. 19, behold, I will do a new thing. It will spring out now. Don't you know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and river Amen. in the desert. Amen. May the Lord bless his words into our heart this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. David said in the psalm, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. For some of us here, our broken foundation is that we have lost that steadfast spirit within us. The songwriter says, Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. May the eyes of your heart be opened, and may you see Jesus high and lifted up, so you can ever draw closer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, we give a praise. Uh -huh. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. I want to see you. Wherever you are, you're just going to pray this prayer with me. You're going to say, Father. Father, Please, open my eyes this morning so that I may know that which I've never known before, that um, I may hear that which I've never heard before. Somebody yes. lift your voice and ask the Lord this morning. Lord, please Lord, open, open my, my eyes, eyes to the I deep revelation. That which I've never open seen my before. eyes to revelation this ear, morning, Lord. Open my ears that I may hear that I've, that I've, heard that I've not heard from you I before, Lord. Open my Lord. eyes Lord, to Lord, deep Lord, revelation this morning. Download information. Download revelation to my mind. Sort that I need for the next phase of my life. Lekatar o zaloche tekete lu prekete yalaba. Blessings this morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Before we have our seats, we're going to pray this prayer. You're going to say, Lord, this morning, via this word I'm about to hear, please download to my mind information that I need to move higher, that I need to move from my comfort zone to that place you have destined for me. Will somebody pray this morning in the name of Jesus? Lord, I have to be that you will Lord. download information Revelations that need the God to move from the realm I have right now to that I need to supernatural that I will live from the natural that I have right now to the place you've destined for me. Thank you, Father. Resource in Jesus' my life, my name, my we have prayed. Glory. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we bless your name. Thank, Thank you, you for another time like this. We return the praise and the glory to you. Thank Amen. you for so a time like this. In the beginning, when you created the heaven and the earth, you knew that this time, this pandemic period will come. But nothing caught you by surprise. You are well with. It is we human that we are not aware. Therefore, we return the glory to you in the name of Jesus. In Amen. advance of what you're going to do via this service today, Lord, we thank you. Of the lives you're going to change for the level you're going to take us to, we thank you. We know that by the end of this service, Lord, something will ignite in our life. Revelation will be downloaded information will be released and we will move from the state we are right now to a new realm of glory in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. In Hello. Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Father Amen. God, we are here can shout a big hallelujah and hallelujah. celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God's word hallelujah. to you. And I'm praying, I'm trusting God that today that God's word will find expression in your life in the name of Jesus. I want to Amen. thank my father, my amazing father, privilege. I pray that God grace will multiply it in Jesus' name. All right, today, Amen. in a few minutes that I have before me, the Spirit of God will be speaking to us on a topic that I've touched. If you can say with me, I'd like you to say it, above and beyond this season. Come on. Above and beyond this season. Yes, I know you're saying it. The scripture we read in the book of the scripture we read in the book of Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, a very familiar story. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. Amen. And rivers in the deserts. Glory to God. I'd like to, begin, I'd like to begin by saying that not everyone that looks can see above and beyond. Hmm. Not everyone that opens the eyes can actually see above and beyond. It takes a man who understand the time and the season to see above and beyond. I'd like you to understand that there is difference between looking and seeing. They are not the same. 
there is big difference between looking and seeing. There are people that look and there are people that see. Mm. Looking has to do with the physical, the peripheral, the things you can just look at and say, yes, I'm looking at this, this I'm looking at this. But seeing is insights. Seeing is foresight. Seeing is vision. And only few people usually see. Mm. Most people are always at the place of looking because that is what they can see. That is what it is around them. So it is not everyone that looks that actually see. There are certain set of people that, that, that have this ability to see above and beyond. And I'd like you to know this, that there are blessings locked up in every season, both good and bad. You need to understand that, that there are blessings locked up in every season, both the good and the bad. But know what? Only those with the eyes of insights and foresight can see them. <laughs> Not everyone can see. No, there are blessings that are in just in, in a form that you will not know. Just the way you see gold. Many people, if they see gold in their raw state, you will have passed it by. You will not know that it is gold because you are just looking at the rough, at the rough epic. You are just looking at it. But a man that understands, that, that, that knows what gold is, that I've seen it before, with the eyes of looking at that, there is a way gold looks like, even in their raw state. Mm. There is a way gold looks at when you see gold in their raw state. The mimas, when they see, the moment, even if they are digging, they've done like 200 feet, and they sight gold in the raw state, they can understand, they can see that, no, this one is gold. But a man that is looking, even if the man... Even if that thing is there for 10 years, the man will not see because what is only looking is not seen. Hmm. I'd like you to know this, that God is always doing something every day. God is always doing something every day. I've, I've understood this very long time ago in my life, that God is ever doing something every day. And the scripture confirms this to us in the book of Lamentation 2, verse 23. He said, there are a new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Jesus. This is to tell you and I that God is in the business. He does things every day and night. He does in the morning. He does in the noon and does in the time. But wait, <laughs> how many of us can see what God is doing in the season? How many of us can understand the wind? How many of us can understand the storm? How many of us can understand the, the, the things that God is doing every day? It only takes the one that I've seen to actually see what God is doing. There is a story that caught my attention, and every time, by the grace of God, I've been opportunity to preach this topic before. The story is so captivating, and any time I read the story, it always brings the kind of person I am. It's in the book of First Chronicles, chapter twelve, verse thirty-two. First Chronicles, twelve, verse twenty-two. It says, "And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren." Where at their command. Hello. <laughs> this story, if you, if you have your time, please get back home and read First Chronicles chapter 12 from verse 1 or thereabouts to verse 32. In the band of David, in the army of David, there were different types of army there. But these people called the children the sons of Isaac. They were the least, they were the lowest number band in the army of David. On that army, they had 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. <laughs> but these people called the sons of Issachar, they are the lowest band in the army of David. But wait, when I was doing my research, I was reading the commentary Bible. I was made to understand that these people, they are not the kind of people that are always in order to do things. They are not the ones that do everything so much in order. They take time and see. They understand, they look at the weaknesses and the strength of people and build over it. They don't just go out and do business like every other person does business. They don't just wake up and say things the way every other person say. They are few people, but they understand the times that they are in. 
Bible told mm. us that these young people that they were just 200, they were commanding men of 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. They were respecting and obeying them because what? They understand the times that we are in. Mm. I'd like to understand this morning God is speaking to someone. Please understand that it is not in the multitude of degrees or qualification that determines your degree in life. Yeah. It's not yeah. in the amount of degrees and the qualifications that you put together that determines your altitude or your degree in life. I can tell you, I have seen PhD holders, I have seen MD, I'm seeing uh, master holders that they are still driving, they are still today, they've not found, they've not seen job to do. But I tell you, I've seen ordinary SCSC, SSC older, just an A level older, amazing things the one is doing. Let me tell you, the difference between the game is that one is seen and the other is looking for job. Other mm -hmm. is looking for job. The one is seen, is seen, it looked at and looked at a problem. This a problem. Anytime I'm opportunity to train young people, I always tell them on my phone, every phone I buy, I always put this caption there. I'm, I'm a solution to the world's problem. I'm a solution to the world's problem. Anytime I wake up in the morning and I try to put on my phone, that thing comes and says, reminds me that that is who you are. Mm. Many people that look, they look for it. But mm. the one that understand the times, like the sons of Isaac, they see, they see, they see. So where the problems are, I always tell people, most of our pastors in Nigeria, we, we bear witness to them that I said the gift of God in a man is there. The environment that you are situated does not matter. When you understand that what God has deposited in you is, is, not, is not determined by the environment, <laughs> even though if they take you to the area that has no impact, because the gift of God is in you, it will swell out and begin to ignite greatness around you. Amen. Amen. Only it takes a man that sees to see what God is doing. So today yes. I want to challenge you. You're a businessman, you are a businesswoman. I know, you, you, I know most of us are doing business, but I tell you, we are in a time, in a season. The question I'm asking is that what can you see? Mm. What can you see? Are you mm. just looking the way everybody's looking? Are you mm. just there looking at the way the things are changing? <laughs> Lay, mm. lo, listen to me. 2007, by the grace of God, Pastor James will remember, or 2017, thereabout, I was running an online ministry called Like the Phillips. And by the help of the Holy Spirit, through my Father and the Lord, He encouraged me. And when that thing was down there, I was asking the Holy Spirit that this is an amazing opportunity. Now, what will I do? I was running the online ministry and it was doing amazing. One of the conferences I had in 2017, I had participants from 17 countries. And uh, I looked at it that this is a platform. Now, when that thing was not running again, I have Holy Spirit. This is an information. There are pastors out there that need to hear this. You know what I did? Holy Spirit said, put this thing together. I put them together in the form of an e-book. And I put it together. And the e-book, I put a price, 3500 And I went on Facebook and I ran an advert on it. And I sold many copies, about 100 or 200 copies. I sold it. This is where I'm going to. When I started running the adverts, Many of the pastors, some of the things that is happening right now in 2020, God has shown me in 2017. For those of the pastors that bought that ebook, they will know. I said it. I said, a time will come. A time will come not far from now. People will not like to go to church. People will find it easy to connect to their services, to churches, online, via their platform, via phones, tab, and all that. And they will receive the blessing the same measure. Of blessing. One man said, you are an antichrist. You are an antichrist. I can't even say that. You mean church to be closed. I said, I'm not saying that, but this is what I can see, that in years to come, so I'm, I was saying that you pass off me the high time to embrace the online ministry. You see, everything that we are doing right now, God has given me the blueprints in 2017, and that was what brought me to start the online ministry. And I put it in that book, and I was telling them, I gave them a blueprint of how to run an online ministry. I said, in your house, have a banner at the background, set a tripod, put a camera, and begin to project from your room. And you will discover that you are projecting to millions of people from the comfort of your home. Someone say, come on, you're an antichrist. How can you start a church in your house with a camera? I say, don't worry, leave it. I tell you, when this pandemic came, I have the email list of those pastors. They start calling me. Oh, Pastor Elijah like Phillips, you said this a minute ago. Some of them are ashamed to send me an email that I should come and assist them. Let me tell you, if you don't see what God is doing, 
<laughs> there are blessings that are, that I said that are locked up in every season. You might not be a partaker. You might not be. You might. Because of what, what you are doing, you are just looking. You are not seeing. I want to move very quickly because of our time. So you see, your ability to lead is determined by what you can see above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Your age or qualification will not matter. I'd like you to know this. Please understand that the, your ability to lead, I'm sure that many of us that are working in big organizations, the reason why you will employ a manager, the reason why you employ an ED or MD is that because the man probably have years of experience, he must have worked somewhere. And when the man is receiving the job, he must have given you a manifesto and said, in five years, I will take this company. If that man does not have the requisite knowledge or experience to take the company, nobody employs that person as manager. So what gives you the ability to lead is you having the ability to see beyond and above the present now. If you are given a company that is currently running on $5,000 and they give it to you as a believer, as a believer, what can you project in five years? What is your projection in five years? Can you see beyond the now? Or you are only seeing the presence now? So what qualifies you? What qualifies you to enjoy the blessing in every season is what you can see above and beyond. In the book of Numbers, chapter 13, verse 30. Numbers 13, verse 30. And it's an interesting story, amazing story. These guys, when every other person were looking at the giants, they were looking at the troubles, they were looking at the ups and downs. These two guys came up. In verse 30, he says, and Caleb and Moses, he says, you see, in that place, there are trouble there, oh, we cannot go there, oh, they will pull us down, oh, coronavirus is out there, oh, business are running down, oh, this and that is going on there. Still, you people, and he said it in front of Moses, he said, let us go up once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. <laughs> that statement wouldn't have proceeded out of those guys if they have not seen something. Yeah. They have not seen something. If yeah. they have not seen something, sir. That's right. They have That's not right. seen anything. That's you right. You see, what gives you the audacity, what is called audacity to speak, is what you have seen. Mm. I don't know if that is correct. It is mm. what you have on the inside that you can project. Mm. When you don't have what it is to lead, it does mm. not matter if they place you at the highest place. It's just a matter of time. Such person will come down. Mm. But what gives you the ability to lead? I mean, you lead, lead, and lead numbers of person. I tell you, it is your ability to see above and beyond the season. Amen. 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 You see, I'd like you to know this quickly, that looking is natural. Looking. When you are looking at things, it is natural things you are looking at. But wait, seeing is spiritual. Seeing is spiritual. It is only those that God opened their eyes that can see what God is doing. And that is the reason why the children of Isaac, they were people that understand the times. They understand what is happening. They understand the politics. They understand the business. They understand their industry. They understand what is going on. And they are not quick to do things. They take their time and rely on the help of the Holy Spirit to give them the full knowledge, to give them the full information before they release it. But if what you do is looking there are tendencies that you might not be able to tap into what God is doing now. Hmm. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1 to verse 8, 58, an interesting story about a man called David. David was a man that he was busy in his, father, in his father's farm, doing amazing things there. There is a man called Goliath. <laughs> this story is so interesting. Goliath is a big person. All the giants in the land, in the land, every one of them, both the warriors and saw the armies, they were all looking at a giant. <laughs> they were all looking at the giants. And a young boy came out, his name is David, and he said, You, this uncircumcised Philistine, today your head will come down. Hello, such kind of statement cannot be uttered by someone if that man had not seen something. Mm. So in his own eyes, he was not seen a giant. He was not seen a giant. <laughs> I don't know if you are following me. He yes. wasn't seen a giant. In his own eyes, he was seen a rat. Hmm. 
He was seeing a rat. And that was why he was able to pull a man that every other person were looking to be giants. It was the same thing Caleb and Joshua saw. Joshua and Caleb were not seeing giants. They were seeing people that they had the strength to overcome. Yeah. It is when you are looking that trouble become magnified. When you are looking, it's when the trouble in life become magnified. But when you look, when you see with the eyes of, of God, that thing looks like nothing before you. Glory to God. Glory so to God. When David, when David stepped in and the giant was expecting him to wear some great helmets, some kind of empty clothes, <laughs> and David laughed and said, You, uncircumcised Philistia, who are you? to defile the army of the Lord. Mm. You today, your head will come down. The man was saying it from the angle of revelation. He was saying from the angle of impact that he has received from the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit had opened his eyes to see that this man called Goliath is nothing. Mm. Mm. I'm praying for someone this morning that right now, as you are listening and hearing the voice of God, that Almighty God, God is speaking to you. He will give you the revelation that you need for the next 10 years of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is a principal God. Oh, yes. He respects himself, and that is why he said he honors his words more than his name. That's right. Two scriptures in the book of Proverbs 18, verse 16. Proverbs 18, verse 16. It said, a man's gift make room for him and bringeth him before great men. The second scripture, Isaiah 61, verse 6b. It said, ye shall eat. The other scripture says, you shall inherit the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast. Excuse me, wait. God honor his words more than his name. God always <laughs> gives reverence to his, to his word and his name. Use That's the scripture right. we just read now. Use the scripture we just read right now. Those scriptures, listen, he said the gift of a man make way. But listen, your gift in the original state cannot stand before mere men if what you are doing is looking. Hmm. If what you are doing with the gift of God in you is just looking, it's just looking. I tell you, 2005, 2006, when we were living in a room, it wasn't a room, it was a cubicle. That cubicle was a kitchen that was built for the house at the bus quarter. And at that time, my dad and my mom and the six of us in that small room, if you need to go out in that room, you have to bend your head. You cannot stand straight because the roof is short. So if you're in the room, you have to sit down. You cannot stand. But while I was in that room, I was seeing the beauty of the future of Ayana. I was seeing, it was clearer. It was bold. So I was not pulled by the circumstances that was there at that time. I tell you, any time I move from that house and I go to church and I go do my business and I go to school, people look at me and say, hey, you, Kenny, Afana, I say, don't worry, you don't understand. Ah, they look at where I'm coming from, where I live, and the kind of thing that come out from me. It's like, excuse me, it is not related. I say, don't worry, I am preparing, I'm looking, I am like the future I am going to. Hmm. You know what? At that time, when I was there, by the grace of God, every place I go to, I was ensuring that I did not just wait. And because God has given me the revelation and look, I was not looking at those things. I took in the necessary thing by sharpening my gifts. What was I doing? I was taking the necessary courses, necessary certificates, necessary trainings, going from one place. One day someone said, you, it is all your money that you are using. I said, don't worry. Let me be investing my money in buying these things now. Let me be investing and buying and be going for those training. A time will come that those things that I've gone for will begin to bring flood of income for me. Mm. So you see what? If you, if you are still looking at the gifts that God has given to you, you are saying because God has said the gift of a man make room. But I tell you, if David was looking at his gifts, there is no way Saul could have called him to come and play for him in the, in the, in the palace. Hmm. Because David, Bible told us, give an adjective about David. He said the man was skillful. The word skillful means that he has honed his gifts. He has sharpened his gifts. And that was what brought him before the king. Hmm. i like you to understand this morning that if you keep looking at your gifts, there are chances that you might not be able to stand before kings. There are chances that you might not be able to stand before great men. And you see what is called wealth transfer. You might have heard this over time. The wealth transfer that, is, that God stated in the book of Isaiah 61, verse 64. He said, you will inherit the riches. You will inherit the riches of the Gentiles. It's what is called the wealth transfer. Let me tell you, a time will come not far from now. Again, I'm saying it again. It is not going to be far from now. As a matter of time, we are already in the time. A time will come that 
the, the unbelievers, they will be tired of their wealth and their riches. They will be looking for skillful believers. They will be looking for believers that are skillful, that can manage their fears of everything. And at that time, they will just say, you, because you are good in this, take over this and begin to enjoy it. But the question is that if you don't have the commensurate gifts, the commensurate gifts to understand that this is what I need to do, like the sons of Isaac, even when the wealth transfer is going on, you might not see. Mm. Hmm. I'd like you to know this very quickly, that there is gift in every man. That's Please right. don't ever, don't ever right. underestimate that you don't have gifts. <laughs> Bible told us, in the book of Matthew, Jesus was giving a parable. He said he was giving a parable about the talents. He gave them gifts according to their several abilities. So every man that God has created, there is a measure of God gift in his life. But wait, mm. your gift in itself cannot bring you before great men just like that. Your gifts like that given to you cannot bring you before great men. I will tell you, when Jesus was giving the parable about the talents, he called them and gave them gifts according to the measures of their what of their ability. And he went away. And his expectations that as I'm coming back, I want to see these gifts will have been multiplied. These gifts will have been well sharpened. These gifts will have been well, you know, groomed and be better. That was his expectation. So he was, he was ready to present them before his father. That was the, what is called the presentation. In, 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 uh, in entertainment, it's called showbiz. That was what Jesus when he was giving the parable, was, was coming back to do, to showcase the talent that he has given them to his father. And when he came back, the first one that he gave, that one said, Master, I have done this with this gift. He said, wow, amazing. Enter to this place and begin to enjoy yourself. The second one did the same thing. When he got to the man that had one gift, because the man underestimates the gift God has given to him, he said, well, what is this gift? It's nothing. It's nothing, Jerry. The master will come and carry by himself. I will say that the master told him, say, you are a foolish servant. Oh, you find yourself in the lake of fire. Do you know what happened? The man was unable to stand before the great God. Because what? He left the gift in the original state. If you ever tell yourself that you don't have gifts, I tell you it's a lie. You have the gift of God buried inside of you. The gift of God is in you. What you should do is to begin to sharpen the skill because a season, a time is come and the time we are in, we are in the time where the Bible talks about in the book of Romans that the endless expectation of the righteous are waited for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. The world is in dear need of solution providers. Both in politics, both in business, both in IT, both in agriculture, both in fintech, in every area, sector of life. The world is in DNA because what? They have seen the most troubled things in their life. So they are looking who will be our savior? Who will be? The question this morning is that will you be part of those people? I'm sure some of us that are in business, you must have read this book called The 80 by 20, The Parental Laws. 80 by 20 principle. You see, what is currently happening now, there is what is called the, bl the blessing of the surface. And there is what is called the blessing of the above and the beyond. But what is currently happening now, this 80-20 principle is that 80% are struggling for 20% on the surface. Hmm. Why only 20% are enjoying the 80% above and beyond? Do you know what place them above and beyond? <laughs> if you go and do all your research, go and find out in every organization, people that do the 80% of the work are the 20%. And they are the ones that eat the most because what? They commit themselves. They give themselves to it to ensure that things run out. If you want to remain in the place where every, everybody is struggling for 20%, then you will, might not be able to partake in the blessing that is above and beyond the season. There is a blessing that is above and beyond the season. And the Bible has told us in the book of Isaiah we read, it said, can't you see it? Can you not see what I am doing now? I'm telling you, can you not see that I will make way? And you're still saying, how is it possible? Come on, I'm a scientist. I study science. There is a way in the world that water will spring from desert. Desert is a dry land. You keep arguing it. And God is telling you, can't you see it? 
Can't you see what I'm doing? I'm going to make way in the wilderness. I'd like you to know this morning that for you to enjoy the blessing that is above and beyond the season, you must reposition yourself ritually. Hmm. Hmm. You must reposition. I'm not talking about the kind of prayer you pray and you pray and you go. No, when you are praying, you are praying with a mind of repositioning. You are praying with a mind. I have always known this long time ago that I am not meant to be poor, regardless of the state. The mindset changed. I am not meant to be poor. I didn't come from a wealthy family. It is not traceable. Wealth is not traceable from my family. But there's this resolution. I made up my mind that no, I am going to be among the least of people in the world that when they mention their name, they will mention the name of Lagi De Phyllis. Because what? A man made up his mind and said, with the help of God, I refuse to remain the same way every other person is. So if you want to do is that you look the way every other person look, you might not be able to enjoy the blessing that is above and beyond. You must reposition yourself spiritually. You must reposition yourself physically. You must reposition yourself mentally. Most of us as believers, I beg to say this, most of us, we, we spend more time, we pray, especially in Africa, where I am in Nigeria. People spend more time to pray. Even the time they're supposed to go for their business, they spend those time for prayer. And they leave what is important. And break it. they are substituting the time they should use for their business. And when things happen, they will go to God and say, Lord, why is this thing happening? But you were not in the place. You were meant to pray at the time you should pray. We were told about Peter and John. At the hour of prayer, there was a time that they have stipulated that they're going to pray. And the time they went, go do their own business. But in Africa, where we are, and that's why it's in Africa, Africa remains poor. Because what? We have this mind of just always looking at things. We mm. don't go beyond the, 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 the nose. We don't just go beyond. We believe that if I look at it, I will get it. No. God told, Mo, told Abraham, for as far as your eyes can see, <laughs> for as far, God did not use the word as far as you can look. He knows the power behind what is called sin. Sin is what is called sight. It is what is called vision. It is what is called foresight. God told Abraham. He said, he gave an example. He said, if all you can see is just Nigeria, I will give you Nigeria. Hmm. He said, but if you can see as far, if you can see 30 nations, if you can see 100 nations, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. Amen. You need to understand yeah. that if you will stop looking today, you will begin to see what God will be downloading to your mind. Sometimes when I'm praying and I'm alone, my wife knows when I'm praying, I close my eyes and I'm in the realm of the supernatural. I begin to see amazing things, informations, things that I say, wow, what is this? This is, come on, this is not natural. This is not natural. And that is why I don't follow the bandwagon. I don't do the same thing every other person do. No, I stay on my lane by the lead of the Holy Spirit. And I do my thing because what? It is directed by the Holy Spirit. But if you keep looking and keep looking like every other person, there are tendencies that you might not be able to enjoy the blessing that is above and beyond. I'm praying for someone this morning. God will download to your mind revelations that you need for the 10 years of your life in the name of Jesus. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 3, God told the children of Israel, you have thought around this mountain enough. Uh-uh, you have been moving, looking around this mountain. Come on, what is wrong with you? Will you turn around and get into this place? Because what? They were just looking and looking at the mountain. In verse 3, God said, Ye have come past this mountain long enough. Come on, turn not words. So if you, as believer, don't understand the season that we are right now, that there is what is called the paradigm shift. There is paradigm shift. Wealth is currently moving from the physical to what is called the digital. You know, while I was doing my study last night, God gave me a revelation. And, and Daddy, I please, I want to like you to listen to this. This is by the help of the Holy Spirit. He gave me this revelation. A time will come not far from now. <laughs> I don't know the specific time, but a time will come that 90% of the things that we do in the world we have is going to be digitalized. 
All schools will be digitalized, even from the cradle. Right. Parents that currently they cannot teach their children, they will have no other option than to teach their children in that way. Real mm -hmm. estate, people will not like, this is what I'm going down to listen, please. Real estate, people will not like to go out and begin to search for house. At that time, there will be a mobile app that you will build. The, the agent will just go to the property and take a video of five minutes and scan the whole place and upload on the website or the mobile app. And when, and when a customer, a client is looking for a building, the client will just say, I'm looking for three bedroom or duplex in Bedford or whatever. And the person will see the house in a video and the person will view the whole house. And when the person is satisfied, contact the, 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 the agent or whatever, and the transaction will be done. There will not be any physical contest because mm. a time is coming. Another great pandemic is coming. The pandemic mm. will be so much that people will not like to go out. We will be wearing mm. clothes like the people in the, in, the, in the isolation center, those white clothes, I don't know what they call it. Maybe it's a, whatever garment they call it. That is what most people will be wearing because at that time, nobody. So everything will be digitalized. If you don't see what God is doing, I was listening, I was reading through Pastor Adeboye in like the Holy Ghost night last about two weeks ago, or a week ago. He was saying that God is doing something in this season that many people still don't know. They are still looking at coronavirus. But behind coronavirus, God is doing something. Something is changing. Something is changing. Please, I'd like to encourage you. God is speaking to you today. We are believers. There is what is called the wealth transfer. The wealth is going to move. It's going to move. But if you don't understand the season and the time, for you to quickly do what is called repositioning, you might not be able to enjoy the blessing that is above and beyond. I'm praying again for someone. You will not miss out in your blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say you will not miss out in your blessing in the name of Jesus. Beginning Amen. from now, Bible make us that we are the light of the world. What it connotes is that as believer, anywhere you step to, you are to beam light. You are to show light. That is our original position. There is nothing else about us. We are the light of the world. When we are placed on any place, we shine and darkness cannot comprehend it. So in any industry that you are right now, I'd like you to begin to look five years ahead. Begin to look three years ahead. What is God going to do in this industry? Will I be the one to lead the cause of change? Will I be the one to lead the cause of feeling? I have an opportunity to speak to more than at least four medical doctors. I didn't know them from Adam. They just called and said, oh, but brother, thank you for that platform. That platform is amazing. It was after I learned from it, it was a thank you. I have an opportunity to speak to doctors I don't know them from. I have lawyers as my students. I have many other people in great qualification. Banker, a man, he works in FCMB. Student. Who I have, many of them are even have the greater qualification than me. But what place you lead is your ability to see above and beyond. So in your industry now, begin to look, begin to see what God is about. There is a paradigm shift. You must see it. Before every other person sees it, you as the believer, you must see because what? You are in what is called the town of God. The Bible tells us in the book of James that all good and perfect gifts come from the Father. So right. when the good gifts come from the Father and the believers are not well positioned, because God is a principal God, if an unbeliever picks up that thing, that thing will have the same measure of result without any denier. Without any denier. And that is why you see in the world today, 20% of the richest people, they control the wealth of 80 people in the world. And if you check the percentage of them, they are unbelievers. They are Buddhists. They are either other religion. The percentage of believers that are controlling the world's wealth, they are very tiny. Because what? Believers, we look, we don't see. We look, we don't see beyond the now. We look, we don't see. And God is telling us now, begin to look above and beyond. Stop looking at the now. Forget about the present. Look, I have for forget about the past. Look, I'm doing a new thing. The new thing is what you should be seeing. Look not about the past. Forget about the present. Forget about your achievements. Glory be to God. Those are great things you have done. But look beyond and above and beyond. It is when you get to that place that we can impact the real world we are 
talking about. If we mm. believers don't get to a place where we can command, we can give impartation to the world, let me tell you, the people that God sent us to reach, naturally we might not be able to meet them because of what we don't belong to their class. Wow. I have made a resolution in my mind that where my dad could not step to, where anybody in my lineage, by the grace of God and the gift of God in me, I will go beyond and 10 times ahead of them. That they will hear one more call on large day Phillips. I will get to this by the grace of God. It's Amen. a resolution. Amen. Amen. That is the only way we can affect the world that we have always been praying to affect. Hmm. But as long as we remain in the states, in the now, and we are comfortable, you enjoy everything around you because you are making some money. That's okay, good enough, that's fine. You can go ahead and enjoy the money. But let me tell you, where the real wealth, <laughs> where the real wealth happening, if you don't look above and beyond the now, you might not be able to get the information you need to get there. Because there, in that place, what is called there, the people that live there are people with the same mindset. Pastor James can be a witness to it. He can tell you from experience. There are places that he has strayed into that some of his colleagues that he finished from school, they are not there. Do you know why? Because there is a difference between him and them. Some are looking and others are seeing. And that is why you see, you know, when I was looking at the, 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 the list of the richest man, Amazon was not among the richest guy in the world before. But the man, when he looked back and looked quickly, he said, how? No, we have to change this thing. Wherein Buffett and the rest of them have been like this all the time. What can I do? The man went back and repositioned the business and repositioned everything and repositioned it. <laughs> Today, Amazon is the richest guy in the world. You know what? Because he went back and stopped looking at the Amazon alone. He gave it a room and gave his house. And now it is. Man. Please, I'd like to encourage you. Whatever God has given to you, now that you are doing, understand that it's not for the now, it's for the future. It's not for the now, it's for the future. It's not for the now, it's for the future. As I begin to run up this morning, God gave me this revelation some time ago. He said, if you want to be among the richest people in the world as believers, being wealthy is not a sin. Don't believe the devil that if you ride in Rolls Royce or you ride in Phantom and all those cars, that is the devil's. No, it is what is called the blindness of the devil to keep you from your inheritance. Bible yeah. told us that every good gift and perfect gift come from the Father. Excuse That's me, right. what is the explanation of good and perfect gifts? God is the God of the best. He, he, he always enjoy people riding and living in the best because he's our father. God gave me this revelation some time ago that if you want to be among the richest people in the world, you must think the way like this. You look at what the wealthy people, the rich people, they, are only, they only have opportunity to get that thing. Maybe for instance, maybe the wealthy people, they are always the one buying that thing. If you want to be among the richest people, Pick that thing that, they are, it is only, that only belongs to the wealthy and de 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 decentralize it and let an average man, a common man, have access to that thing. You will be among the richest people in the world. Hmm. I will give you two examples and I'll round up. Back in the days when it was only the rich people that have opportunity to book a cab from their house, a common man does not have opportunity to say he wants to book a cab because it's expensive. The likes of Uber and both, they came out and decentralized the business and make it in such a way that even an illiterate man can touch a button on the mobile app and the man will order for a car and the car will come and stop in front of his house and pick him. And these guys, and that is how they, nobody knew them before. But in no time, this guy, this guy so much, I love him. The founder of Boats is from Estonia, a very small country, part of Europe. I follow him a lot and I read his story, 26, seven years old guy. He looked at Europe and discovered that Uber was coming to Estonia in years to come. And he went and said, what can I do? And he developed the business called the boat. And that was how boat was able to penetrate the part of Europe and he died down to Africa. This guy saw the future before every other person came and God mm -hmm. gave him the breakthrough. So if you want to be among the richest in the world as believer, please stop looking. You begin to see 
in the realm of the spirit. Decentralize whatever any businessman, any rich man is doing. Decentralize it. As you decentralize it, that every, everybody can have access to it at a very minimum price. You will be among the richest in the world. Hmm. Very quickly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. What must you do to enjoy the blessing that is above and beyond? Number one, you must be born again. That is the first thing. If you are not born again, you are not permitted to enjoy the blessing that is above and beyond. For as long as your life is still in sin, you cannot equate your life with every other celebrity in the world. If your standard of living is the way they live, you can never enjoy it. There is what they do that you cannot do. Many of them are in occultic, they are in different fraternity. But our own fraternity, our own club is the blood of Jesus. Amen. So if, you don't, Amen. if you don't belong there, if you are not born again, that is where you get your strength to fly. That is where you get your audacity to speak. You don't need any other time or any other backup. As long as you are born again, hello, and you set yourself apart, you are on your way to the blessing that is above and beyond. The second thing that you need to do immediately is that you need to stop looking. Somebody shout aloud, I will stop looking and start seeing. You stop looking and start seeing. Amen. The third thing to do is to discard wrong mindset about life and see reality. I don't believe certain things about life. I only believe what the scripture says about life. Every other thing that people say, traditional, all those things, I don't believe. The scripture says that because of tradition, because of tradition, people, but just, the word of God have no effect in their life. As long as you put, you believe some certain tradition about your, about your life, about where it came from, there is a chance that you might not be able to see. The next thing is that you must embrace change. You must embrace change and neglect stories. I don't like stories, I love action. You must forget, embrace change, one, neglect stories and complaints. And the last thing, by the grace of God, is to change the quality of your thinking and thoughts. There are people that I, God has given me the grace to set my life, the life of Pastor Sam Adeyemi, and the life of Godman Akelabi, these amazing people, their life, I emulate their leadership and the way in which they pattern ministry, excellence, teaching of the word of God, dissecting the word in a way that every other person in the world will want to hear you. They don't just preach and say, I want to preach. You must change the quality of your thinking when you talk. You must change the quality of your talk when you meet people. You must not just believe that everybody is the same. No. When this whole thing about your life change, you have repositioned yourself from the commoner, and now you are on your way to the above and beyond. The children of Isaac, they were not people with the wrong mindset. They, their quality of thinking is different. Their quality of thought is different. And that was why they were, they, they, their brethren were their command. I'm praying again for someone. Via this message you have heard this morning, God is going to give you the blessing, the blessing of 10 years. He will give you the revelation that you need to walk in needs freely in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like us to pray right now. Our time is fast, friends. We have two prayer points. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our prayer points, wherever you are right now, you're going to cry out to God and say, Father, Please open my eyes to see right. what you are doing in this season. Will you pray aloud in the name of Jesus? Father, Father in the mighty open name my eyes Jesus. to see my eyes and what you are doing, what you are doing in this season. Open my eyes to see what you are doing in this season. Please don't do things without me, Lord. And see what you are doing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus, have mercy upon me, Lord. Open my eyes, O Lord, in Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. As we begin to pray this prayer, sometimes ago, you know, 
I was telling some people, those in transportation around the agile, I said, a time will come that big BRT will come this way. <laughs> so I said, no, oh, possible now, on a go tell you, money wait for it. Don't worry. You better begin to reposition your mind about this. And well, if you want to get in a story, they cannot come. As God will have his BRT has taken over the road of agile now. They are not going and coming in. The day, those days when I came down to, when I came to Ajah 2005, 2006, you can count the numbers of cars on the road. But now, the cars have been multiplied. This is to tell you that transportation business will begin to change because by the time federal government and state government pump money, there are people that would naturally go down. They, their business will not be viable again. You must begin to reposition yourself. As we need to pray this prayer, I don't know the sector that you belong, whether you are in a sector, education, you are in whatever sector you are. Listen to me. Nobody ever believe that one day with the cost of a button from your phone, you can apply for loan and you will not need to sign any paper. These are the things that people saw in the future before now. And they built it. And today, they touch a button on their phone and they apply for loan and the phone and the loan is delivered to their bank account without a step, without moving to the bank. This is the future. It is not antichrist. Don't believe that you must. It is our inheritance to shine as light. Delete the wrong mindset. Be among the inventors of great things in this world. This is the way we can affect the world. Our last prayer point. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you you will Jesus. cry out to God. You will say, Father, please Father, give me revelation of this season. Give me revelation of, of this season. season. That revelation. I may know what to do by time. That I may know what to do by time. Like the source of the second. We do prayer now this morning. You can look at the screen. The prayer point is there. Okay, tell me, tell me, tell Give me revelation of this season. That I may know what to do for a time. Like the songs of Isaac. Give me revelation of this season. That I may know what to do by time. Like the songs of Isaac. In the name of Jesus, but I give me revelation for this season. Give me revelation of this season. Give me revelation of this season. Give me revelation of this season. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Amen. I'm so I'm so sorry. My time is is fast spent, but I'm so sorry. But I just need to let you know that this is the time that God talks about in the book of Joel, that in the days there will be the release, visions will be released. Hello? If in this season that we are right now, the time of coronavirus, you have not been able to see anything, please, I'm telling you, there may not be any better time for you to see something. If this time, because one, let me tell you the reason why, because you have adequate time to yourself than before. Mm. So you cannot complain that you don't have the time. Mm. But if you cannot see it now, there are chances that you might not be able to see. I want to encourage you, let God begin to open your eyes into every sector of the economy. You see, four areas that you should look out for in the year 2025. 2025, fintech business will beat down banking industry. Fintech business will beat down banking industry big time. So if you are now a banker, you are an accountant, begin to think wild right now. Fintech will go, we go so a wire that banking industry will go down. We go so much down. People will not leave their house and they will transact business without a paper. The second place that is going to be affected in years to come, yes, it's currently booming right now, is real estate. Real estate is going to go big, but I tell you, a time will come that most people will not like to go out. Begin to look beyond the present now. Begin to look beyond the present now. And the last part, the, the, the two part of it, is the information technology is going to go beyond the realm that the Bible says that the wisdom of man will greatly increase. It will increase greatly that just with a thought of this. So if God gives you the grace to begin to build some skills, please, I'm not here just to tell you something. I'm telling you from years of experience what God has done for me via this revelation. What I was the first person that ran an online conference in 2017. Pastor James was one of the speakers. 
10 speakers live on Facebook, morning and night, for five days. But now everybody is doing online ministry, big time. Zoom that we are using now, it is online ministry. Please see beyond the season, see beyond the now. There is a blessing of the above and the blessing that is beyond. Father in heaven, I thank you for your word you have sent to us this morning. Thank you because you sent this word for a season. You sent it for a reason. Lord, I decree and I declare by the unshorn in the house, with the grace in this house this morning, that in the years to come, we will be the leader in this world in our different sectors in the name of Jesus. The wealth transfer will not miss us. We will be partaker of it and we will still serve you and we will still be vibrant and we will still love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. There shall not be nothing broken and nothing will be missing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything you're going to do in this season, you will give us the revelation you will give us the download of it and we will be an inventor and part of great happenings in the world in the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Abba Father. We return the glory and the praise to you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Child of God, Amen. celebrate Jesus because right now, God is giving you revelation for the future. Glory Amen. be to God. Jesus, glory to God.